what do we do? Do we keep on buying more property or we do, do we pay down mortgage debt? So this is a conversation I was having with my mate Dave. Um, everyone's got a mate called Dave. You're only 10 feet away from a Dave. Um, so me and my mate Dave, we went to the Ivy, which is very nice in Leeds, by the way. You should definitely go if you've not been, just for the experience. The Ex Benedict there is truly amazing. Um, so we were talking about, do you pay down more mortgage debt or do you just keep buying more? And it's really tough, you know. I, I still really haven't got the ultimate answer to this, except for, let me just pull up my spreadsheet, we're actually doing both. Uh, that's my um, conclusion. Uh, but Dave was saying that I'm the only person he knows in property that's really keen on paying down debt. And I think what happens is that we've got these biases and recency is a bias, okay? So it's called a recency bias. And the recency bias says that uh, interest rates are low, interest rates will always be low, but I remember when, ee, I remember when, interest rates weren't low, interest rates were 4 or 5%, which is still relatively low, by the way. But I remember when the, they were that high and the uh, mortgages were much, much higher than they were. Are we going to go back to those days? Maybe. Obviously, they're trying to control uh, inflation. And inflation is a big aspect uh, that's controlled using interest rates. And so interest rates have already risen, only 0.15 to get it to a quarter point. Uh, but are we going to keep going up and up and up? Yeah, I think they probably are. So whilst other people aren't thinking about it, that's fine for them. But for me, it actually makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So we're actually paying down some of that mortgage debt. Now, we talked about this in yesterday's uh, podcast. I'll give you the numbers again because um, not everybody listens to everyone, obviously. Um, so in terms of fund allocation, this is what we've got. We've got so any when I talk about fund allocation, I'm going to give you percentage points. OK, so even if you just got £100 a month spare, or £100 a month that you can move into something, or if you've got £1,000, or if you've got £10,000, it's irrelevant what that uh, pound amount is, I'm going to give you percentages. So for me, right, none of this is financial advice. For me, 10% goes into crypto. 30% goes into paying off mortgages. Now, originally it was 40 and 40, but I've changed it. It's now 30% goes into paying down mortgage debt. 50% goes into um, saving for new property. I'm just going to add all these up. Yeah, they do add up to 100%. I was just double-checking. <laughs> uh, and then ISA, so we put money into an ISA, tax-free wrapper, goes up. You, you can sell it all, it comes out, it's all tax-free. That's a further 10%. So we've got 10% on crypto allocation. Uh, we pay, we buy crypto every Saturday. All goes through automatic, by the way, using Binance, uh, Binance.com. Uh, we 30% goes into paying down mortgage debt. 50% goes into saving for a new property purchase, so the next buy to let. And obviously when that one comes in, if that's got £300 profit, 10% of that, you know, so £30 goes to crypto, uh, £90 goes to paying off a mortgage, uh, £150 goes to saving, and £30 goes into ISA. So if that's got a profit of £300 when we buy that next one. And when we buy the next one after that, and the next one after that, and the next one after that. So what happens is that the gap between what you owe and the value of your property. So you're increasing wealth. This middle bit here, the equity is your wealth. That's how much you're actually worth. Now, that's nothing to do with cash flow. You can be a millionaire and still skin. And boy, trust me on that, for the first 15 years, I had millionaire status and I had zero cash because the equity wasn't enough because you had all these bills and service charges and so on. So you have to reach a point where the rents go up high enough so then you can start earning enough money. And obviously we hit that um, some time ago and that's where we are. And so we are doing a mixture of both. Um, we do, um, some people uh, just want to pay down debt and, and in the olden days, that is what we would do as well. We'd pay, uh, sorry, we wouldn't pay any debt down. The reason why we wouldn't pay any debt down is because we could offset the mortgage interest against our rental income. Obviously, Section 24 kicks in. Carrying large amounts of interest-only uh, debt, mortgage debt, it serves zero purpose. The only purpose it serves is being able to um, uh, use that for buying more property. You know, if, if you've got a 100 grand property and you pay it off, you know, you have to save up 100 grand for the next property, right? Or if you refinance that 100 grand property and, you know, have 20 grand each, you've got five more buy-to-let properties. And that's exactly what we did. We used to refinance everything, pull it all out and buy more. That's how we grew the portfolio. Now, of course, and we're 23 years in, so our, our goals have changed. We're not as young as we used to be. We want to change the way we do it. But now we're like, mm, 
How about we slow down buying more property, but we actually pay down some of this mortgage debt? And in another 25 years, it all won't be paid off because paying off 30% isn't enough. Uh, so at some point, we'll have to sell some of those properties to pay off the rest of the properties if that's what we want to do. And so who knows what we're going to do with that. But we'll deal with that when we get there. But that's what we're doing now. 30% goes on paying down and 50% goes on allocation to new property.